What's up, y'all? This is Sokoski of Funny back at it once again, dropping this knowledge, wisdom, and understanding for the African people. In this one, we're going to take a look at the Black Manifesto by James Foreman. I got this on my page already, but we're going to look deeper into the Black Manifesto going through it line for line. Without further ado, the Black Manifesto. We, the black people of similar Detroit, Michigan, for the National Black Economic Development Conference, are fully aware we've been forced to come together because of racist white America has exploited our resources, our mind, our body, our labor. For centuries, we've been forced to live as a colonized people inside the United States, victimized by the most vicious racist system in the world. We have helped build the most industrial country in the world. We are therefore demanding of the white Christian churches and the Jewish synagogues, which is part and parcel of the system of capitalism, that they begin to pay reparations to black people in this country. We are demanding $500 million from the white Christian churches and the Jewish synagogues. This total comes to $15 per nigga. This is a low estimate from we maintain there are probably more than 30 million blacks in this country. $15 a nigga is not a large sum of money, and we know that the churches and the synagogue have a tremendous amount of wealth and membership. White America has profited and still exploits black people. We are also not unaware that the exploitation of colored peoples around the world is aided and abetted by the white Christian churches and synagogues. This demand for $500 million is not an idle resolution or empty words. $15 for every black brother and sister in the United States is only the beginning of the reparations due to us as a people who have been exploited, degraded, brutalized, killed, and persecuted. Underneath all this exploitation, the racism of this country has, been, has produced a psychological effect upon us that we begin to shake off. We are no longer afraid to demand our full rights as a people in this decadent society. We are demanding $500 million to be spent in the following way. One, for the establishment of the Southern Land Bank to help our brothers and sisters who helped leave their land because of racist pressure from people who want to establish cooperative farms but who have no funds. We have seen too many farmers evicted from their homes because they dare defy the white system, racism of this country. We need money for land. We must fight for massive sums of money from this Southern Land Bank. We call for $200 million to implement this program. We call for an establishment of four major publishing and printing industries in the United States to be funded with $10 million each. These publishing houses are to be located in Detroit, Atlanta, Los Angeles, New York. They will help generate capital for further cooperative investments in the black community, provide jobs, and an alternative to the white dominated and controlled printing field. Three, we call for the establishment of four of the most advanced and scientific and futuristic audiovisual network to be located in Detroit, Chicago, Cleveland, and Washington, D.C. These networks will provide an alternative to the racist propaganda that fills the current television network. Each of these networks will be funded by $10 million each. Number four, we call for the Research Skills Center to provide research on the problems of black people. This center must be funded with no less than $30 million. Five, we call for the establishment of a training center for the teaching of skills in community organization, photography, movie making, television making, television repair, radio building, and repair of all other skills needed in communication. This training center shall be funded with no less than $10 million. Six, we recognize the role of National Welfare Rights Organization, and we attend to work with them. We call upon $10 million to assist in the organization of welfare recipients. We want to organize white welfare workers in this country so they may demand more money from the government and better administration of the welfare system of this country. Seven, we call for $20 million in the establishment of a black, national black labor strike and defense fund. This is necessary for the protection of black workers and their families who are fighting racist working conditions in this country. Eight, we call for the establishment of the International Black Appeal, IBA. This International Black Appeal will be funded with no less than $20 million. This IBA is charged with producing more capital for the establishment of the cooperative business in the United States and Africa, our motherland. The International Black Appeal is one of the most important demands we are making, for we know that it can generate and raise funds to the United States and help our African brothers. The IBA is charged with three functions and shall be headed by James Foreman. The first function, A, raising money for the program of, black, of National Black Economic Development Conference. B, the development of cooperatives in African countries and the support of African liberation movements. C, the establishment of a black anti-defamation league 
to protect our African image. Nine, we call for the establishment of a black university to be funded with $130 million to be located in the South. Negotiations are presently underway with Southern University. 10. We demand that the IFCO allocate all used funds in the planning project to implement the demands of this conference. In order to win our demands, we are aware that we have to have a massive support. Therefore, one, we call upon black people throughout the United States to consider themselves members of the National Black Economic Development Conference and act in unity to help force the racist white Christian churches in Jewish synagogue to implement these demands. Two, we call upon all the concerns of black people across the country to contact black workers, black women, black students, and black unemployed community groups, welfare organizations, teacher organizations, church leaders, and organizations explaining how these demands are vital to the black community of the United States. Pressure by whatever means necessary should be applied to the white power structure of the racist white Christian churches and Jewish synagogue. All black people should act boldly in confronting our white oppressors and demand this modest reparation of $15 per black man. Three, the delegates and the members of the National Black Economic Development Conference are urged to call a press conference in the cities and to attempt to get as many black organizations as possible to support their demands of the conference. The quick use of the press and the local areas will heighten the tensions of these demands must be intended to be won in short period of time, although we prepare to for a protracted and long-range struggle. Four, we call upon the total disruption of selected church-sponsored agencies operating anywhere in the United States and the world. Black workers, black women, black students, and the black unemployed are encouraged to seize offices, telephones, and printing apparatuses and for all the church-sponsored agencies to hold them and hold them in trusteeship until our demands is met. Five, we call upon all delegates and members of the Black National Black Economic Development Conference to stay sit-ins, demonstrations, at selected black and white churches. This is not to me interpretation as a continuation of the sit-in movement of the early 60s, but we know that the active confrontation inside white churches is possible and will strengthen the possibility of meeting our demands. Such a confrontation will take the form of reading the black manifesto instead of a sermon or passing it out to church members. The principle of self-defense should be applied if attacked. Six, on May 4th, 1969, or a date thereafter, depending on local conditions, we will call for black people to commence the disruption of racist churches and synagogues throughout the United States. Seven, we call upon the IFCO to serve as a central staff coordinating the mandate of the conference and to reproduce and distribute in mass literature, leaflets, news items, press releases, and other materials. Eight, we call upon all delegates to find within the white community those forces which under their leadership of blacks to implement these demands by whatever means necessary. By taking such actions, white America would demonstrate concretely that they are willing to fight the white skin privilege and the white supremacy and racism that have forced us as a black people to make these demands. Nine. We call upon all white Christians and Jews to practice tolerance, understanding, nonviolence, as they have encouraged, advised, and demanded that we as a black people should do throughout the entire enforced slavery in the United States. The true test of their faith and the belief in the cross and the words of the prophets will certainly be put to the test as we participate in extremely modest reparations for our role in developing the industrial base of the Western world through our slave labor. But we are no longer slaves, we are men and women, proud of our African heritage and determined to have our dignity. 10. We are proud of our African heritage and realize concretely that our struggle is not only to make revolution in the United States, but to protect our brothers and sisters in Africa and help them rid themselves of racism, capitalism, and imperialism by whatever means necessary, including armed struggle. And we are, and we must be willing to fight the defamation of our African image wherever it rears its ugly head. We therefore are charging the steering committee to create an anti, a black anti-defamation league to be funded by money raised from the international black appeal. 11, we encourage, we fully recognize the revolution in the United States and Africa, our motherland, is more than one dimensional operation. It will therefore call out the total integration of the political, economic, and military components 
And therefore, we call upon our brothers and sisters who have required training and expertise in the fields of engineering, electronics, research, community organizations, physics, biology, chemistry, mathematics, medicine, military science, and welfare to us in warfare to assist the National Black Economic Development Conference in its implementation of this program. Well, the implementation of these demands must have fearless leadership. We must have a leadership which is willing to battle the church establishment to implement these demands. To win our demands, we have to declare war on the white Christian churches and synagogues, and this means we have to fight the total government structure of this country. Let no one here think that these demands will be met by our mere stating them. For the sake of the Christian churches and synagogues, we hoard that they have the wisdom to understand that these demands are modest and reasonable. But if white Christians and Jews are not willing to meet our demands through peace and goodwill, then we declare war and we prepare to fight by whatever means necessary. We are therefore proposing the election of the following steering committee. Lucius Walker, Remy Freedom, Luke Tripp, Howard Fuller, James Foreman, John Watson, Dan Aldrich, John Williams, Ken Cockrell, Chuck Wooden, Fanny Lou Hamer, Julian Bond, Mark Comfort, Earl Allen, Robert Browning, Vincent Harding, Mike Hamilton, Lynn Hope, Peter Bernard, Michael Wright, Muhammad Kenyatta, Mel Jackson, Howard Moore, Harold Holmes. Brothers and sisters, we are no longer shuffling our feet and scratching our heads. We are tall, black, and proud. And we say to the white Christian churches and the Jewish synagogues, to the government of this country, and to all white races and periods who impose it, that there is only one thing left that you can do to further degrade black people, and that is to kill us. But we have been dying too long for this country. We have died in every war. We are dying in Vietnam today fighting the wrong enemy. The new black man wants to live and live by means that we must not become static or merely believers in self-defense. We must boldly go out and attack the white western world at its power center. The white Christian church is another form of government in this country and they are used by the government in this country to exploit the people of Latin America, Asia, and Africa. But the day is coming soon to an end. Therefore, brothers and sisters, the demand we make upon the white Christian churches in the Jewish synagogues are small demand. They represent $15 per black person in these United States. We can legitimately demand this from the church power structure. We must demand more from the United States government. But to win our demands from the church, which is the link up with the United States government, we must not forget that it will ultimately be by force and power that we will win. We are not threatening the churches. We are saying that we know the churches came with the military might of the colonizers and have been sustained by the military might of the colonizers. Hence, if the churches in the colonial territories were established by military might, we know deep within our hearts that we must prepare to use force to get our demands. We are not saying this is the road we want to take. It is not. But let us be very clear that we are not opposed to the force or no real proposed to violence. We were captured in Africa by violence, and we were kept in violence and political servitude and forced to work as slaves by the military machinery and the Christian church working hand in hand. We recognize that issuing this manifesto, we must prepare for a long-range educational campaign in all communities of this country. But we know that the Christian churches have contributed to our oppression in white America. We do not intend to abuse our black brothers and sisters in the black churches who have uncritically accepted Christianity. We want them to understand how racist white church Christian churches, uh, with its hypocritical declaration and doctrines of brotherhood, have abused our trust and faith. An attack on a religious belief of a black people is not our main objective, even though we were not Christians when we were brought to this country. But it was that Christianity that used to help enslave us. Our objective in issuing this manifesto is to force the racist white Christian churches to begin the payment of reparation, which is due to all black people, not only by the church, but also by a private business and the U.S. government. We see this focus on the church as an effort all around which black people can unite. Our demands are negotiable, but cannot be minimized. 
they can only be increased and the church is asked to come up with some large sums of money that we are asking for. Our slogans are, all roads must lead to revolution. Unite with whomever you can unite with. Neutralize whenever possible. Fight our enemies relentlessly. Victory to the people. Good life, good health to mankind. Resistance to domination by white Christian churches and Jewish synagogues. Revolutionary black power. Without a doubt, we shall win. Now, this is pretty deep by James Foreman coming out in 1969 around this time. Now, as a lot of us know, if you read see the other video, which I'm going to post with this in the, um, at the end of this, that a lot of black people shot this down. Bear Rustin, you know definitely a lot of black preachers shot this down. They was not having this shit. Hell to the no. But, you know, James Foreman, I, um, as you've seen through the video, I was posting his books for uh, more required reading and stuff like that to get more deeper to this brother, who was a, a good, you know, who was a good tactician. Because the plans he made up in here are not bad plans for black people to, to implement. You know, yes, it is true that Jewish synagogues and the white Christian churches had a lot to do with our enslavement. You know, there's an undeniable fact. But once again, we're not hitting these people up for reparations and things of that nature. You know what I'm saying? Or telling them, you know, this is how your church done got big, and this is how you got the land and the wealth from it. But, he, you know, James Farmer, who was a thinker, you know, as you've seen him in the movie The Great Debaters, he was in that movie. He had the thoughts and the plans of to implement this. So we give a shout out to our, our elder, who, our, excuse me, our ancestor, because he died in 2005, you know, James Foreman, who came up with the Black Manifesto. A good plan, a great plan that needs to be tweaked a little bit more for the 21st century. Because this can work if, you, we, if we all put our heads together and make it work. Now, I know some black Christians going to be aggy, but hey, you take Christianity, like in my other videos, and you make it, like Dr. John Harry Clark say, and you twerk it and make it your way. You Africanize it, you know? You put it in your own type of, rebe your own type of rebellious spirit. Also, another key thing is he said this had to be done by force, which is another thing people don't want to be, you know, involved with. Because they're not going to give us shit. I think we know that by now, you know? He asked for revolution in Africa and asked for revolution in the United States. And that's where it all had to come from. But the first revolution had to start with the educational program, which he talked about, which affects the mind and takes place in the mind. If you're not talking about doing that, then you're just wasting your time. You know what I'm saying? We're not going to keep on going over and doing the status quo. Doing the same thing that works over and over again is the def and don't work is the definition of insanity. It's like people today, earlier today, when I was having the conversation, they was talking about, well, this person, he got it started, but he didn't finish it. I, I don't, I don't, I don't honor that. You know what I'm saying? Either you gonna get it, you know, you start something and you complete something. You know, you don't, you know what I'm saying? You, you don't, you know, or you do the best you can getting where the ball need to be getting to. But don't just give him credit because he done started the fire. He didn't really make it happen. You know what I'm saying? So this is the kind of thing we gotta focus up on and change our mindset and our being. This is a Coast Gear Fun Day. Saying peace. And y'all have a wonderful day. And subscribe to the channel. This Black History and Knowledge. Hotel. Peace.